Well, good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. Mark, that's the perfect song for those of you who may be watching. I know everybody here knows that Christmas isn't over yet. If you remember the song, 12 Days of Christmas, um, you know, this, this is still the Christmas season. Perfect song. Thank you for starting things off. This time, Sheila will lead us forward with our announcements. Good morning, everyone. Are there any announcements this morning? Yes, Cindy. Any other announcements? Um, I just want to thank everybody so far for all the collection of the, the hats, scarves, mittens, and gloves that we have up front. It's a very good collection of things there. And there is no coffee hour this morning. Um, there are also no birthdays and anniversaries for me to miss today. Um, <laughs> Happy New Year. And our uh, monthly mission this month is for Matthew 25, where we collect prescription bottles, which need to be cleaned and uh, or in the back on the attendance table, there is a jar there to collect any loose offering you'd like to give to help towards shipping. If there's no other announcements, then let's stand for our call to worship. Some people say that Christmas is for children. Christmas is also for people of age and experience. Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, and Zechariah, the priest, accept, accepted new birth breaking into all their familiar patterns. Simeon, the singer, and Anna, the prophet, hoped for many years to see the Messiah and then recognized the Messiah in a humble couple's baby. How then shall we respond to Christ's promised coming? With willingness for change, with patience in long waiting, with silence and singing, with the ability to see Christ in the least likely of our brothers and sisters. Please join in our opening prayer. Holy God, we come before you with thankful that you love us as we are. We are creatures of your hand. We are a community formed by your spirit. You are the potter and we are the clay. With your sure and loving hands, shape us through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Holy, Holy, Holy. song. 
God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Would you please be seated? As we prepare for this time of forgiveness and confession, Hear now these words, this call to reconciliation. Creative God, you make all things new in heaven and on earth. We come to you in a new year with new desires and old fears, new decisions and old issues, new dreams and old weaknesses. Because you are a God of hope, we know that you create all the possibilities of the future because you are a God of love. We know that you accept all the mistakes of the past because you are God of our faith, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and with praise. We come into your presence with gladness and make a joyful noise. And we serve and bless you. Amen. Having heard these words of reconciliation, would you please join together with me in our unison prayer of confession. Jesus Christ, God with us, you came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We have not always lived up to your expectations for us. We confess that we sometimes, too often, impoverished the spirit, grant us the fullness of grace. Wrapped up in ourselves, open us to others, slow to learn. Teach us of your ever-expanding truth. Proud over little, wet our hunger and thirst for justice, Scattered like grains of the field, gather us into a single loaf. Distracted of mind, direct us to what is most important, your love for us, your will for our lives, and your sustaining presence in every circumstance. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God says to us, you are my children. I love you. I'm proud of you. Stand firm in your renewed commitment. Know that I have forgiven you. I call you by name. You are mine. I've entered into covenant with you and will stand by you in all times and all places. Dare to live fully the life to which I have called you. Amen. <laughs> first Sunday of the new year, on this first day of the new year, let's greet each other in Christian love passages of Christ. Give each other a holy love.
may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning is Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried in their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Epa, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Thank you, Sheila. The New Testament reading that I'm sharing this morning is actually Paul's writing of the church in Ephesus. It's basically his introduction and greeting. And it goes like this, chapter 1 of, of the Ephesians, verses 3 through 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless, before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed upon us in the beloved. This time, the young, uh, Jelani, do you want to come up or do you want to stay back there? What you want to do today, buddy? You want to come up? Let's talk about 2023. Hey, buddy. All right. How are you doing today? So he can hear back there. So Dale, okay. Did you hear that, Dale? You heard it. Good. Yeah. I don't know sometimes it's kind of hard. So, you know, when you go to school, do you ever have to take a piece of paper and write on it the date when it's a new year? Like at the top of the paper, somebody was talking in the back, and they said, the teacher, first day of class in a new year, like last year, you know, 2022, this year, 2023, right at the top of the paper, your name, and then the date. So uh, is it ever confusing now that you're going to write 2023 on stuff you got to write things on? No. Okay. <laughs> so, so what would you like to see happen in this brand spanking new year? You don't know. All right. I, I pray for good things for you and the family. So, you know, because 2023, we don't know. A lot of people said, I'm glad 2022 is over. Let's, let's, get, let's do a survey. Who here is glad 2022 is over? Look at that. Oh, me too. That's just about everybody. Let's, let's hope and pray for better things in 2023. And that's what really I'm going to be talking about today, okay? Um, so this is still the Christmas season, but, um, but, but, it's, still, but it's, it's still a time that you know, is really important for us to remember that you know, I pray for love. So. Let's have a word of prayer before you go back. Gracious God, thank you for Jelani and his family. I pray that you surround them with love, that you uphold them with your strength, give them great hope, and bless them with a, with a much better 2023. And we pray for that for ourselves as well. Thank you, buddy. God bless. Nothing exciting to show you today, so I'll have to have Kate run to the store and pick up some stuff we can... Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Oh God, may the words which I am about to utter and the privilege that I do now accept, may my words be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Now, so hopefully, Tim, I want you to laugh or go on and laugh really, really good. A couple of goofy jokes here, so, so, so they can hear it 
those who are watching us on live stream and our outreach. Most of us are familiar with the modern day discipline of possibility thinking, the late Dr. Robert Schuller. On one occasion, years ago, Schuller invited the entertainer Pat Boone. Who here remembers Pat Boone? Pat Boone, the singer, okay, to sing for his congregation. He introduced Boone by saying that Pat sometimes gets tired of his all-American boy image that he used to carry. Once a year, he said, Schuler, Pat Boone would check into a motel under an assumed name, close the drapes, go into the closet, probably turn out the lights too, and put on black shoes, not his white shoes that he typically wore. The congregation chuckled. They knew that white shoes were Pat Boone's trademark. Pat Boone came back to that Christopher Cathedral a second time. And he remembered what Schuler had said their, their previous meeting when they were in worship together. And he told the congregation that Dr. Schuler got tired of his image sometimes too. So once a year, Pat exclaimed, Robert Schuler checks into a motel under an assumed name, goes to his room, pulls the drapes, turns out the light, goes into the closet, shuts the door, and shouts, It's impossible! I can't do it! Schuler is famous for having cut the word impossible out of the dictionary. Now we all know that, you know, most of us are glad that 2022 is over, you know, um, when we pray that 2023 is a much better year, but also we face it with some degree of fear. What will 2023 bring for each of us personally, for our families, for our country, for, you know, for, for the whole world? So this morning, I, we want to encourage some possibility thinking. We want to explore the possibility that this year could truly be a great year for all of us. Now, I realize that this sounds rather trite because you, many of us, face obstacles, things that we're maybe dreading that we're already aware of, that we have maybe perhaps even sh shared, even mountains that we aren't sure that we can climb. Notice I didn't say this would be the easiest year we ever faced, only, hopefully, the best that it can be the best year. Success cannot always be measured in either accomplishments or accumulation. As a matter of fact, you should probably never do it that way. If the coming year brings us closer to God and closer to our friends and maybe helping restore friendships that, that, from which we have been alienated, if, if it helps us value more deeply the gift of simply being alive, it will be a great year regardless of our outer circumstances. So let's explore the possibilities together. The possibility of a rich and a rewarding new year. From the text from Isaiah that we're focusing on this morning, it is a text full of possibility and hope, isn't it? That's going to be kind of the focal point of my message today. With the blessing of God's anointing his words, Isaiah counsels his people, arise, shine, for your light has come. Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Many who heard Isaiah's summons surely responded. What nonsense. How can I let my light shine? And you may be thinking that. You know, I don't know. My light's pretty small. It's pretty dim. But it's a light. And we know any light in the darkness is always overcome by the light. You might think, I've had a tough year. And many have. I'm old. I'm feeble. Or I'm young and I'm restless. Besides, I don't see any evidence of the deliverance of God. Perhaps there is someone here this morning who is of a like mind. But this can be a good year. It can. Let me offer some reasons why you and I can have a good year this year. In the first place, we know who we are. One of Isaiah's primary tasks was to remind the people of God who they were who they were. We need to be reminded of that too. We are God's people. God loves all of us. We are those for whom Christ died. We belong to the best family in town, God's family. An unknown poet has written, and I love this, I may be young, I may be old, but I am somebody, for I am a God's child. I may be educated, I may be unlettered, but I am somebody, for I am God's child. I may be black, I may be white, but I am somebody, for I am God's child. I may be rich, I may be poor, but I am somebody, 
for I'm, a, I'm God's child. I may be fat, I may be thin, but I am somebody, for I am God's child. I may be married, I may be divorced, but I am somebody, for I am God's child. I may be successful, I may be a failure, but I am somebody, for I am God's child. I may be a sinner, I may be a, a saint, but I am somebody, for Jesus is my Savior. I am God's child. There is a great secret of life. To believe you and I are somebody, somebody, because we are God's child, all of us. It also means that we know where we are going. Isaiah wanted his people to know where they were going. He painted a picture of a, of a peaceful, prosperous time, a time when the peoples of the world would look to God's people for guidance and inspiration. Isaiah understood the power of vision. If he could help his people see what they, they could be, then God would bless the people in a wondrous way. Here again is a great secret of life. People who arrive are those who know where they are going. General George Patton once told the story about a Chinese national young man who had enlisted in the American Army in World War II. The fellow's unit was stationed in Louisiana. As luck would have it, this Chinese soldier got lost one on, in one of the maneuvers. Being unable to speak English, but he was learning, he knew enough to understand military commands, he couldn't ask where his outfit was located. He was stranded at a crossroads where he attempted to hitch, hitch a ride. Normally, if you'd hitch a ride, we don't do that much anymore, uh, with, with any army vehicle of the unit as they were passing by. And the problem was that he tried to use his index finger to hitch a ride instead of motioning backward with his thumb. Get it? You can guess what happened. An army convoy approached, a large convoy. The Chinese soldier pointed his in index finger down one road of the crossroads and the driver of the first vehicle didn't stop because he thought the soldier was directing traffic. And when the convoy failed to stop, the young Chinese soldier moved to another road and, and, and next pointed, and he pointed, he pointed that way, down the new road, according to General Patton. According to Patton, one of the afternoon, the soldier split the army unit so badly by pointing down one road and then another that it took them over a week in those days to locate all of the troops. Troops, trucks, and tanks were scattered all over Louisiana and Texas. Boy, some people spend their lives going down one road and then another and may be the case this year. They wander nowhere in particular, and they're kind of lost, and they wonder why they can't get anywhere. May I suggest that we, as we start this new year, we write down those things we want to accomplish during this year. Maybe those, those relationships we want to restore. What are some of the goals you may wish to attain? Notice they didn't ask for New Year's resolutions. And let's make certain our goals are worthy goals. In the spring of 1608, the settlers of Jamestown, Virginia, discovered gold. Oh, man, gold. At least they thought they did. They thought they did. They almost totally abandoned any efforts at planting crops and preparing for the season and for winter and all that kind of stuff, preparing buildings and readying themselves for the, for the long, harsh winter. They had found gold. Life was going to be great. And they devoted themselves to steadily digging out and washing the precious metal. The colonists probably would not even have survived the summer and fall if it had not been for the Native Americans and not fed them. However, they were able to send a ship back to England with a very heavy load of the metal that they had labored for all spring and into the summer. Unfortunately, the gold turned out to be iron pyrite, which is also called what? Fool's gold. They had given their time, their talent, all their energies to something foolish, fool's gold. The colonists would say the name fool's gold had special meaning for them. For not only they had been deceived by the worthless look-alike mineral, but they had foolishly abandoned everything they needed for life in a quest that would make no sense, even if their discovery had indeed been real gold. Stocking up fool's gold, ignoring the really important matters of life, until it's too late. Finally, 
if we're going to have a good year, we know that God is with us. God is with us. Isaiah's people knew that God went with them, and so it is with us. Somewhere I've read that among some Native American tribes, it's an interesting rite that took place in a little boy's life at the time, designed to help the boy learn the courage of becoming a young man. When he was very little, he was taken out into the forest to spend the night alone, left with nothing but a knife for protection. He was re required to remain silent, alone in the woods, as he awaited whatever horrors the night might bring in that forest. The next morning, however, he was greeted with a delightful surprise. He found that his father had been standing and watching all through the night with bow and arrow ready, lest something hurtful should happen to his son. But he didn't know it. He was, dad was there. Many of us have discovered something like that in the midst of our, our own long, difficult nights. Someone was watching over us through the night. Mrs. C.D. Martin wrote a song about it with her husband. She was visiting Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Doolittle of Elmira, New York. The Doolittles were both physically handicapped, and their souls were still strong, however. They radiated such joy that the Martins inquired about its source. Mrs. Doolittle responded with pride, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Mrs. Martin was so inspired, so taken by their response, that she went home that same day, and you guess it, she, she arranged that song in that old gospel hymn that Eth Ethel Waters immortalized. His eye on, is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. If we can go into this new year knowing that, this is how we can have a great year. How can there be any other, anything else other than a great year? We know who we are. We know where we are going Hopefully not this way. We know who's going with us. So I say, amen, and happy new year. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious and loving God, we look into this new year, some of us with fear and trepidation, wondering what 2023 will bring, knowing that this past year was a difficult year. But a lot of times, God, too, we also say, okay, what should we do this year? What do I, you know, what are my goals? What do I want to do to give you glory? But sometimes, God, we're kind of like pointing fingers and getting lost. Help to guide us, God. Be that guiding light, that light of epiphany, leading us forward. When we're standing in the darkness saying, come, follow me, follow me. This is the way. Amen. This time I'd like to ask what prayers of joy or concern you'd like to lift up. I have a couple up here, a couple, three already. So, um, but uh, prayers of joy or concern. Joyful that the sun came out. Yes, Ron. I have an aunt, uh, Sandy Cron. She's currently in uh, Grafton Hospital. She fell and broke her hip. Uh, Christ in your mercy. Here are our prayers. You said it nice and loud, so I'm sure they heard it. That's good. Yes. How's your hobby? All right. Prayers for my husband, whose uh, hernia surgery was a success. He is on the road to recovery. Christ in your mercy. And here are prayers. Yay, Jean and Jean. Yeah, you're certainly in our prayers. You've been in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you, you too. Thank, thank you so much. Other prayers this morning. A lot of times people will think of one after we come back. Aha. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Yes. Um, prayers for my friend's niece, Lydia. Lydia. Um, she's the nine-month-old that oh, has yeah. cancer. Um, yeah. She is doing an experimental drug right now, so this is the last-ditch effort to, to help her. So prayers that this uh, treatment works for so her. So Lydia, her family, all of yeah. you. Yes, yes. Christ in your mercy. Here are prayers. Other prayers. A couple that I will share. Daryl is actually in the hospital right now. He tripped and fell and injured his right arm, um, and he also tested positive for COVID. He's in, uh, he's at Fredert in West Bend, and I've got the phone number here, so I will have this information for me so we can follow up with Daryl. So 
Um, and the other one, too, is uh, prayers that uh, Anna had given me for, jo for Josh Lipp, a Mequon firefighter that lives in Germantown, uh, after being hit by a car. Also prayers for Jim, our cousin, that is having health issues, and he's also dealing with COPD, uh, Reverend Ed and Anna. Uh, Christ in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayers. And those we have not mentioned, we lift up as well in our prayers from our heart. Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you that you hear our prayers, that you are with us. You are like that Native American father standing in the forest, guiding, protecting us. You love us. You seek to guide us, even though you give us free will to make our own decisions. You seek to help show us the way when we're lost. We pray, gracious God, for those who are struggling with illness, with a disease, that you surround, surround and support them with love and their families, and that your great physician, you as the great physician, if it be possible in your will, that they be healed. For those who are struggling in other ways, gracious God, those who have been injured, those who serve and protect, we pray for their recovery, gracious God. There's so many prayers we lift up all the time. And we know, God, that you hear our prayers, that our prayers do make a difference, that they do. We don't see it. Sometimes we don't, but sometimes we certainly feel it when we're a recipient of those prayers. We pray as we enter this brand new year, gracious God, that you be with and guide each and every one of us. Help to give us a noble purpose so that we might know that life has meaning and value no matter what our stage and station in life. Because each of us, no matter what our age or our station, can love and can make a difference. And now, gracious God, we together, heart to heart, pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. We forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Freely and richly has God blessed us, and we have shared our gifts of love in our morning offering. When we came in this morning in the offering plate, at this time, Mark will dedicate those gifts with music of grace and thanksgiving.
gracious and always loving and caring God, we would ask you accept these gifts, which we, your people, do offer up to you, grant it to causes to which they are devoted, be causes of love given to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray, we share, and we live. Amen. Would you please be seated? together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. together. It is our privilege as a body of Christ to gather together to break bread and to share in a cup of love, the greatest love that the world has known and will ever know, shared for each and every one of us. He comes. We've all unwrapped most of our Christmas presents, those who share, but this is the greatest gift of all. So would you please join me in our Eucharistic prayer or invitation? The table is now prepared for us. We are invited to share in the feast of God's presence, celebrating here and now all that is meant by being alive. At this table, we celebrate Jesus, who touched our brokenness with his life, who gathers us together inside and out. We give ourselves to that wholeness, moving from hurt to happiness and from darkness to light, filling our lives with love, laughter, and each other and joining with all created things to say, Holy are you, O God. As we might recall, as we've heard so many times, Jesus gathered in that prearranged upper room with his disciples. And this time, as they were celebrating the Passover, he took bread, as was the custom. He blessed it, and he broke it. And this time he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And as was the custom, Jesus poured into a cup from which his disciples would drink together. And he said, this is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. Would the ushers please come forward?
Remembering that Jesus said, I'm the bread of life, let's together take and eat. And remembering that he loves us and would do what he did, even if it was just one of us in this cup, let us drink in remembrance of him. Would you please rise and join together with me in our prayer of thanksgiving as we give thanks to God. We give thanks, O oh God, because in your own free gift of love, you have reached out to us. You have refreshed us at your table, touched our deepest needs, and called us to a life shared in memory and hope. Send us forth with courage and joy in the name of Jesus Christ, that we too may become bread and peace for one another and for the world. Amen. banner floating o'er you, smite death fanning daily for you. God be with you till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. And now by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace Never be afraid God 
shower of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. No, he will hide you in all you do. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there watching from above. Go now in peace in 